We'll start the meeting at uh, Waverly Select Board, March 28, 2018. First item is approved minute, meeting minutes of March 14th. I would uh, move that we accept the minutes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, uh, we were supposed to have an appointment, scheduled appointment, but we're. Yeah, I canceled. canceled. I thought I got an email saying we canceled. Okay, well, comments from the public? Dan, anything? Anybody else? No? Okay. Okay. We're, we're going to be done by 6.15, Fred. I'm <laughs> just... <hope>. I'm okay. <laughs> Even if starting late, we're going to finish early. Yeah. Uh, town Hall. Old business. Town Hall project update and discussion. Yeah. Brian? All work continues on the, on the Town Hall still. Um, they are continuing to work on... Fred, you can add to this. I'm sure you've probably been there more recently than I have. Yeah. We need to work on the, um, some of the mechanicals, the drywall, um, more of the reconstruction of the town hall, and less of the demolition of the town hall. Mm -hmm. um, um, still moving along pretty well. Okay. Yeah, they're trying to finalize. Well, working on the inside, and uh, our fire department was there. Today, doing thermal imaging mm -hmm. all of right. the uh, drywall to make sure all the insulation that was Promise supposed to be in, in the there. walls and promised in the plant is there. And all right, performance. Yes, performance right. testing. And what I've heard, it's uh, it's very acceptable what they found. There wasn't very much at all, but uh, so no, there was a lot of insulation, and there weren't very many bad spots. Right. right. Okay. Right. So, so that's that's a good thing. Uh, we're meeting next week to talk more about some electrical, a few electric minor changes. Uh, you know what else? Uh, I think all the heating, the heated units are in there. They got all the wiring connected supposedly, and, and uh, I think the bathrooms are all. The rough plumbing is in the bathrooms. I don't think they didn't start any tiling yet. They'll probably do the tiling before they put the fixtures in. The windows are in. I think the storm window guy is supposed to be coming soon to put the storm windows on the exterior okay. of the building. So, so that'll happen soon. So, other than it's that, really exciting. Yeah, everything is moving along on schedule. So, okay. Uh, new business fiscal year 2019 budget items. First one operating budgets. Okay. So that would be not this top one, but it's the one that has the uh, the folding, the big one, right? Yeah, I tried to print it large for everybody. Uh, thank you. Past criticism I've received is that it's too small to read, so. Uh, I see. Yeah. Turn up the operating budget, okay. And we've had our series of joint meetings with the Finance Committee and... Yes, in fact, we have I was at their meeting last night as well, and Fred was there for yes. most of it, to, yep. uh, just to listen in. So the Finance Committee um, approved this budget as presented. Yeah. Um, based on those... Uh, five or six meetings that we had with the various department heads and discussions we've had. So we'd be looking for the select board recommendation on the operating budget for the warrant. I think the plan is to have the warrant ready to be signed at our next meeting April 11th. So that would be, that's kind of our last chance mm -hmm. if, if we don't agree with something. but. The schedule we've set out with the Finance Committee is that the Finance Committee had their meeting last night by themselves, they voted, and then the Select Board would go through the same materials, see if there's any mm -hmm. disagreements that we have, and then we had we had a meeting penciled in for next Tuesday if we needed it or whatever we could make work next yeah. week so that we could try to resolve some of these issues before going to town meeting. Okay. Um, so it would be good to get... Yeah. So, so we should, we are. Okay. as quickly as possible, identify what issues there are where we have disagreements and figure out what to do. Correct. Okay. So, Brian, did you want to just give a quick 
Yeah. Summary of, of the say the totals for each of these categories you have, or the major ones at least, so people watching can yep. know what's being proposed. Yep. So general government is um, three hundred seventy-eight thousand six hundred fifty dollars. That's an increase of twelve thousand eight hundred one dollars. That's a three and a half percent increase from the prior year. You want me to keep running yeah, for keep all of them? Yeah. Okay. Keep on going. Cultural Recreation Services, that's a um, budget of $1,114,000, six, or 631. That's, uh, I'm gonna get all these numbers wrong. No, um, <laughs> I, I, I'd like it in scientific notation, please. Oh, man. <laughs> but uh, you have six significant figures, so maybe that's not a good. <laughs> it's an increase of um, $3,592. Yep. over the previous year that's 3.23 percent okay. public health the budget is recommended at the 71,777 if I go slow I can get it right okay. it's an increase of eight thousand one hundred sixty eight dollars or twelve point eight four percent and the biggest reason for that the yeah. increase in that is the the health agent for the Foothills Health District is, yeah. is, is going to be going full time, which I, I really think is needed. Yeah. And the solid waste budgets, the increase is mostly attributed to hauling and uh, tipping yeah. fees. Yeah, but it's still a bargain. Okay. okay. Public safety, the recommended budget is $383,982. That's an increase of 20, um, 23582 up uh, 6.54 percent. The biggest increase there is, is South County EMS of, of almost twenty thousand dollars. It's it's almost the increase yeah. um, for the assessment went up, and that's that's mostly due to uh, personnel costs for South County EMS. Okay. Public Works budget recommended budget um, three hundred seventy thousand eight hundred twenty five. Uh, that's a change of $3,493 from the previous year. So that's an increase of 0.95%. Insurance and benefits, this is the big one. The recommended budget is $751,206. That's an increase of 69371 And that's a 10.17% increase, which the great majority of that are increases in um, employee health insurance costs. Yeah, this, that's the second line there. This would be even larger if yeah. if the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust hadn't made those plan benefit changes. So, yeah, it was probably good that they made those changes. Um, so, so which number are you looking at? Seven fifty one or, or seven eighty four? I'm looking at. Uh, Look at seven fifty one two hundred six. Seven fifty one was. Uh, yep. The recommended. So, so I'm reading the number you reference is is the would be the total budget not taking into account the enterprise fund. Not taking into okay. Yep. Right. Yeah, because because um, there are two things that say fiscal year 19 finance committee recommended budget. Yeah. And one is grade and one is not. The grade one is in most cases smaller than the white one and you're saying it, the difference is where the money's coming from to pay for it. Yeah, the first heading, that heading didn't get carried through. I need to change that. Look at the top, it says enterprise removed. Oh, okay. Or the one in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that heading you see it changed. So this, this, is, the, this is the actual budget that would be seeking. Okay. And why does the enterprise affect so many it well, no, it doesn't affect that one that one. Yeah. So yeah, like it affects the insurance because it's the water department and it affects general government. Yeah, so the uh, enterprise fund pays indirect costs. Indirect costs. Yeah, yeah to the town. Okay. At a certain right. predetermined percentage okay. of a of a yeah. certain line item. That's um unclassified the recommended budget is seventy thousand forty dollars. It's a decrease of one thousand ninety. It's a decrease of um, one point five three. So the total town operations um, recommended budget with the enterprise fund removed is two million one hundred forty one 
$111. So it's an increase of $119,917, a 5.93% increase over the previous fiscal year. Schools, Whaley Elementary School, operating budget is 1,681,259. It's an increase of just over $41,000. It's a 2.5% increase. Frontier, the total budget, this is including operating and transportation costs. Is I, my, I think I'm on the wrong page. I've got school operations. Is that the page we're on? Yep. Yeah. And I don't, but I don't see a two and a half percent. Oh, got it. Thank you. Yep. So Frontier with the operating, operating and transportation together. So the total is 924,234. It's a decrease of four thousand five hundred forty nine dollars so it's, it's a decrease of about half a percent Franklin County Tech budget which we finally got <laughs> um, In the nick of time. this is the first year that there's a, a capital assessment being charged for capital improvements that were approved in 2015 yeah. and have since been implemented so this is the the first that, that we'll see of um, I believe it's, I'll have to check, I think it's either 10 or 15 years of Something capital like assessments. They haven't done the permanent borrowing yet, so I'm not sure they know fully what it'll be. Um, so that total is $167,898. It's an increase of $5,780, or an increase of 3.57%, and that's mostly the capital assessment. The budget, the operating budget itself was a nominal decrease of five dollars. So yeah. enrollment stayed pretty much the same for lately there. And we don't have any kids attending uh, Smith Folk. So the total school budgets are two million seven hundred seventy-three thousand three hundred ninety-one dollars. That's an increase of um, forty-two thousand two hundred thirty-four, or one point five five percent increase. So, our debt service continues to go down. Um, we have the last payment on a dump truck of 47, just over $47,000. And we have, I believe it's our third payment on the, um, the pumper fire truck. So the total debt service costs for FY19 are $131,440, a decrease of 3,843, or a decrease of 2.84% over the prior fiscal year. Can we drop the truck next year? The last, this would be the last payment on the dump truck. Do we need another one? Do we need another one, right? Okay. There's nothing on the capital plan for next year, so. I think we're good for like 10 years or something. Okay, water. And then this is the the enterprise fund budget. Um, for the water department, the total for that is projected at um, $166,795. Um, that's it. Did they ever come through to the finance committee with the price per gallon and the amount of gallons, et cetera. I know that was asked for. I don't remember it coming through. They asked for revenue projections. Yeah. yeah. Those, those are the, in the revised budgets. Okay. Yeah. We'll talk about those at the end. Okay. Um, and then this, 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 see this small amount here of yeah. $3,000. $3, I don't remember what that was about. So this is, this was, this was at, this was in the budget when, when, when I arrived. The water department um, employee um, 
So Wayne uses a water department truck to plow the town oh, lots. Oh, oh, okay. So he's so the the labor costs for doing that are rightfully not attributed to the enterprise right. fund. So there's a small line item. Right. right. I, that, I knew it was, I knew it was something valid. I just couldn't remember what it was. Okay. So the total operating budget here would be um, five million forty nine thousand three hundred twenty two dollars. That's an increase of one hundred fifty eight thousand three hundred eighty three dollars, or three point two four percent. And really, just in just to a breeze over a couple of these things. The big cost drivers this year, um, for scams, scams is up um, nearly twenty thousand dollars. The assessment, group health insurance costs are up fifty three thousand. Um, retirement again is another big one. It's an eleven eleven thousand dollar increase, and then like we, like we typically do every year, education costs at least for Whitley Elementary School, are, are, are going to keep increasing, and that's another increase of uh, mm -hmm. $41,000. Those, mm -hmm. those are the four big ones, and those alone combined for about $124,000 out of the mm -hmm. 153. Yeah. Yeah. So those are, those, are the, those are the big ones, and some of these we have, all of these are, are a little bit more difficult for us to control directly. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Especially the the health insurance. We, we 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 had gotten um a really good sweet deal with you know very low or no increases for a while and right and uh, we knew the time would come. I don't think it did. Okay. So this is what the finance committee recommended. Are, are there any concerns or issues that we want to talk about? No, I don't have any on, on what you've discussed so far. I have some on the uh, capital mm -hmm. account. But yeah, on the on the operating, I I feel there's plenty of things I have concerns about, but there's nothing we can do about them. Yeah. Um, and the I think everybody did a really good job of keeping costs to uh, the smallest amount they could, and at the same time delivering the kinds of services we really need. So that and that's from being at many 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 meetings to uh, discuss it. Um, like for example, solid waste that is such a bargain. You know, the, the our ability to use a transfer station and um, it saves everybody m money. And it looks like it has uh, like a twelve percent increase, but it's a twelve percent increase on a small budget. And all of the increases are really well accounted for. Uh, everybody's hauling charges are going up. For example. So I'm comfortable with these because I feel like I understand why the places have gone up, have gone up, and that they are uh, justified. So. Okay, moving on to the capital. capital. Capital projects. Um. So you're comfortable recommending this? I'm comfortable recommending that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah, for the operating budget. Yeah. <coughs> and, the, and the capital, I it's gonna. I don't know. It'll be hard to go go through all of this uh, for the for the public. Uh, I don't know if you want to. I think we will. Um, what it's like about. 10 to 12 items we, yeah. should, we should talk about them, talk about what the... Now, on, on this page, what I remember from the meeting last night is that uh, there is 
that they recommended all of these. Is that right? Or were that's there some that they said? That's correct. And this reflects yeah. one, the one change that they made, which was to increase the, the transfer <coughs> into the vehicle stabilization from free cash into the vehicle stabilization account. They increased that by $15,000 to total $25,000. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's the, I guess, the one area I have a concern about. Why, okay, I understand the fire department is asking for a rescue and transport vehicle. It's coming out of free cash. Yep. Why isn't that coming out of vehicle stabilization? Because we've got, you've got the police and the highway department, they're going to get vehicles out of vehicle stabilization. That's what we're setting money aside for. Yep. And you would think that the uh, fire department should be in there. Otherwise, you're, you're treating all three of them differently. Two of them are going to need two-thirds vote to get money out to buy. The other one is going to do it on majority. And we've had this discussion last, last year, similar where they wanted to do a stabilization just for the police vehicle. That was a recommendation from finance. And select board changed it on a Warren article saying it would be just a vehicle stabilization, not a police stabilization. So the way it stands now with vehicle stabilization, you know, you're taking out the, the police vehicle out of here for 45,000. Uh, Keith is gonna need another vehicle in so many years. Uh, and I know the water department has got their own account in the enterprise fund to set money aside for their, their vehicle, but then you're treating the fire department outside of all of this. I think fire vehicles should be coming out of stable out of the vehicle stabilization and not out of free cash. There is enough money in there for the show fifty thousand in there balance. With, uh, with the transfer of the we'd be transferring twenty five thousand dollars in free cash into the vehicle stabilization account. And right. then voting it right out right. as part of the um, if we were to yeah um, assuming you have a majority and then a two thirds two thirds yeah and I think right. you, like I'm saying you should treat the fire vehicle the same way why why should it be different. Which one's two thirds to stabilization? Stabilization. stabilization. Yeah. Two thirds to get money out. So your concern is the, they may not get the cruiser. We're putting them under a, a stricter right. rule. Well, right. Then you're our fire department, or even Keith. In two years, if he wants another vehicle, uh, replace his his uh, pickup truck or whatever. And if there's money in stabilization, I, I would say to use it now and, and uh, that gives us more more free cash and yeah, I don't, or, I don't or, or maybe the, the, if, if the real thing is equity right that's what I've kind of hearing right maybe the transfer from free cash to stable to the vehicle stabilization should be 65,000 right and then uh, make sure you have a two-thirds vote to get did I read the right line? Yeah, to get the fire truck. So you want to add another forty for the for the fire vehicle? Well, if you're going to take forty thousand out for possibly at least potentially take forty thousand out for the fire department vehicle, then you'd want to replace that if you can. All right, but you, but so it would put it to the same scrutiny as a. Because the finance committee is trying to build that. Right, but yeah. you've got you've got to, you, if you if you did that well without adding more, you'd have ten thousand less and. I, I, I guess I don't know their reason for putting in 20, uh, 15 more than what they've had in, in the past. I don't remember that discussion yesterday. It wasn't very lengthy, but they feel that 10 is insufficient right. to meet the savings goals for when another vehicle will be due. Well, we're ready for a dump truck. It's already there. We don't have well, dump cash. truck would be a, uh, uh, would not be out of this well, account. I be. would think. Well, I think it could be out of that. Yeah. Well, more. It, it, 
then I then I, I guess if we want to include dump truck in here, I guess I like to see some projections of when vehicles are going to be replaced and then back into if it's over ten years you need four hundred thousand for vehicles, say, then that's forty thousand a year we should be putting in here. Not right. arbitrarily putting right. a number we, in. We should have those projection numbers. Yeah. Police tell us every four years and Keith yeah. is yeah. is every, and, and, like I'm yeah. sure we have the numbers. Keith's very good at projecting that. So Yeah, and maybe it's 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 too late for this budget yeah. season and that, that's why but I it sounds reasonable to have a goal of if we can get our numbers together to yeah. gradually increase each year the amount we put into a vehicle stabilization right. because potentially it means less borrowing, which means less debt service. Right. But so for those years when we when we have enough money to do it, then having a goal that's more than say twenty five thousand yeah. dollars to transfer each year, you're saying let's find out what our 10 your needs plan. are and right. divide it by 10. Right. And aim plan. to put that much right. in if we can possibly do it. Right. Have a nice. plan of how we're going to fund that. Not every year go up and down because one vehicle okay. is, uh, or two vehicles come do it. And I think okay. it gives the department some, some idea of when they can ask for a replacement vehicle. Or could we look historically? Yeah, we are. Maybe no. historically would be the, the better place to start. I'm just trying to figure out how to do yeah. this, because we're not going to solve it tonight at no. this meeting. No, but I I'm wondering if the if finance I'm, committee was attempting to do without having the numbers. Yeah. They know this is coming at us. Right. Yeah. So, so, Brian, what do you think would be a reasonable way to approach well, this, this, getting to that point? This gets back to the conversations we've had about, about reforming our capital planning. Mm. Um, yeah. And I think that should be a, a priority once once we get through the annual town meeting, because that's where those projections are really going to come from. Okay. Well, once we right. sit down with those guys. Okay. Um, but in terms of in terms of right now, um, I I don't have a strong preference either way. However, we want to arrange this. Yeah, um, I would have a. Uh, my preference would be to make the numbers add up. So if if you wanted to insist that the fire department vehicle be funded out of stabilization, then I would want to insist that we increase the amount going into that vehicle stabilization. And over here, where it's where the, the column floor. just says stabilization, that is vehicle stabilization. It's right? just. It's just a general term. It could be Good. from either one of those, but the intent here is for it to be to come right. from vehicle stabilization. So um, I, I don't want to like rob forty thousand dollars out of stabilization just so that we can keep it in free cash. It seems like if it's really a vehicle yeah. expense, then that might, in the spirit of what you're suggesting, yeah. be something to to increase that number and decrease that one. Uh, uh, that said, I don't have a strong feeling about this time letting it go as the Finance Committee put it forward yeah. uh, because I I think we would get two-thirds, we're going to get 90% really on, on, on any of these. Um, I, yeah. So I, I don't think there's a true equity problem because I think people will be, people want the rest, uh, the rescue and transport vehicle. The people want the vehicle and stabilization, and I guess what was the other one? The police. Police vehicle, yeah. Yeah. In there. Police the, cruiser, yeah. The police. I think. I think people understand that that's that that's necessary, and it's not going to be a controversial thing. So, uh, as a practical matter, I don't see a problem with them being held to a different standard because. As a practical matter, my thinking is they're going to both pass. Just, well, just, I, I, but but I think but I think you're right I, I, for moving okay. forward. And and if it happens because we reorganize the capital committee, then moving forward, then that's going to be the model to well, use. But I but I think not. I I think this year that it should come out of vehicle stabilization, the police vehicle, because that's what that account was set up for. And now you're trying to bypass that and give fire department the well the ability to take it out of free cash. When this was originally laid out, 
if you take out the if you take the the fifty minus the the fifteen that they put in last night, it was yeah. only thirty five. So there would have been insufficient funds right. in this in the vehicle stabilization account to pay for the full forty thousand. So that's why it, that's why it was in the, originally put in the free cash column because there weren't going to be sufficient funds in there. Right. Okay. Now for tra it, now they want to transfer in fifteen thousand. So now there's fifty thousand instead of thirty five. Yeah. So is there enough money in there? Yeah. Was there previously? No, there okay. wasn't. So that's why that's why one of those had to be listed in the to come from free cash. Right. It, I, I don't object to if you put the the forty thousand amount from free cash into the vehicle stabilization. I do not have a problem with that, and I think all three departments should get vehicles out of vehicle stabilization account because. Last year, we, like I say, we had this discussion and there was some animosity with one of the departments that thought they were not being treated equally, fairly, or being bypassed. And that's why we set up the vehicle stabilization count the way it was. And, so, I, and I think to honor that and, and to, to make sure the departments last year are, are abiding by that, we need, to, we need to add the fire department in there as well. So can we do that on the floor, like an early warrant article? No. no. You're just the changing the, the warrant, funding. It's the yeah. same warrant article. The I, we're not objecting to the funding, right? It's just the, the source of funds would be different on the warrant article. Yeah, but if you need a different amount of votes, it's probably a different warrant article. If they're coming out, well, of, yeah, out of it would be a different warrant article. But I mean, no. it would probably be written the same way, other than the source of funds. And it won't upset Brian's total budget, I guess, if you leave the leave that or transfer from free cash over, right? Now, so. But you're going to have to transfer it first, right, to stabilization, and then uh, take it back out. Yep. Well, so that's going to take one vote to transfer it, and then a second vote to take it back out for the for vehicles. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it is more awkward to do that. Plus, we've got a fifteen thousand transfer we're doing here somewhere as well. So, so I suppose. Right. So we so, can do a fifty-five thousand yeah. dollar transfer. Yeah, because the fifteen is already coming from what free cash. Right. It, well, twenty-five from free cash. The, the ten they originally started plus yeah, fifteen plus more, 15. right, Brian? So they're asking for the proposal twenty-five from free cash right now. No. To go in. Yeah, yes. Right now. Currently. right now, before we before this our discussion. But ten was already in. No, it had to be a, they added every year to the ten. To an additional 10, but didn't we have 10 there already? Or yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. We do. Okay, okay, I got you. So it'd be 35. Right, so you already have a warrant article going in to add 25, so you just add another 40 to that warrant article. Yeah. All right? So, yeah, it and just have to be before. Do the we need to get this finance committee to meet again to say whether they recommend that or not? Well, do we, do I would it? think we probably should. And that, uh, and our deadline for having the warrant signed is April 11th. April 11th. So there is a bit of time. It's about two weeks ish, a little less. I can't remember what day of the week the 11th is. Yeah, because because what they voted on was was to purchase the rescue and transport vehicle out of free cash. Yeah. So this would so if we want to make this change, we've got to have those folks in for a 10 minute meeting or. It probably would not take very long to do because because what uh -huh. let me let me make sure I understand what what's being recommended you're recommending that a total of sixty five thousand dollars is transferred from free cash to vehicle stabilization right yep. in that the rescue and transport vehicle forty thousand dollars is taken out of the vehicle stabilization account right so that's so that's the order of the votes will matter. Because you're, you're changing two items essentially. And we might need to to uh, make one contingent on the other. But we can change the dollar amount on the floor, can't we? From the from the twenty five to sixty five. We should just on the same warrant article because well, and the other way we we did it last time, Brian. I think. We had our article in for a vehicle stabilization 
yeah. first, and then the second article was for for police stabilization and what we tabled it or bypassed, moved over it or something, didn't vote on it. I forget how that went last year. So we they still had the, we passed. They still had their article in there like they wanted. We passed over it because there was general agreement that it wasn't that important. Right. The distinction to them. Mm -hmm. um, it. If we have a chance to, to clean it up and present a clean warrant, I think we should. Okay. I think it's less confusing for folks. Yeah, to, yeah I, I think we should, if we're going to do this, we sort it out before April mm -hmm. 11th and write the, yeah, don't, don't have changes like that that are confusing. Okay. But, so, okay, that's, so that's my recommendation that we do that, to make a motion that we do that. Take the... Add the uh, 40000 more from free cash into vehicle stabilization to make that 65000 and to take the uh, fire department rescue vehicle out of vehicle stabilization account. I have no objection to that. Okay. In favor? Aye. Yeah. Okay. The other thing, and oh, we'll let them know. Okay. The other thing on on that on that note is, yep. And I don't know if this was discussed earlier in a finance meeting, but the fire rescue vehicle, we never really got a clear understanding of what what uh, John was proposing to buy. You know, all the other police vehicle, we got a, a two-page itemized list of what he's buying. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess I'd like to see maybe for the next meeting what, what he's buying for that. What kind of vehicle? Is it is it just a uh, four-wheel drive vehicle? Is, is it something equipped with lights and, yeah, that's and he, firefighting? He, he presented something with, yeah. with a... Was he it did that? Standard did price for used vehicle, radio, and light bar. And I believe, lettering, I believe. He presented okay, well, a, a budget for that. It wasn't a, a capital improvement planning committee, and it may have been the first finance that yeah. I mean, we didn't go to, or they had their own no, meeting. No, I, I, I was at all the ones where anybody presented. I remember John being there. Um, I don't what, know. Roughly what date? But that would have been end of February, right? Yeah. I'm trying to find that. Meeting before last. Oh, the meeting before last, so that was... Yeah, they had asked them to come back with a, right. a better proposal and a better vehicle right. as far as a used vehicle. Right. They told them to price out a new one. Yeah. They'll price out yeah. a new one, is that what it was? <laughs> okay. Because they weren't happy with the... They were just going to buy somebody's problems and they didn't, They weren't too interested in that. Yeah. This is the way yeah, I'm so, so you remember that, but did, I don't remember him coming back with what he was buying. I thought he was supposed to come back to the Capital Improvement yeah. Committee, but who recommended it last night. Well, no, this was the finance. Well, okay. no, no, no. Dan well, Kennedy is recommended it last night through the fi through the capital improvement to the finance board. Yeah, for the forty thousand dollars vehicle. Right. Okay, but did they ever see what he was proposing to buy? That's why they asked the capital improvement committee because that's where the direction was supposed to have gone. So all I can say is Dan uh, approved it. So. It, I'm only making a guess that he saw the information. I don't well, know. I'm on that committee and we never saw it. We only met once and we didn't have any detail for the yeah. 40,000 vehicle. Because that was the deal. He was supposed to come back to the Capital Improvement Committee yeah. with the details. Can, can we ask John just for the next select board meeting, next meeting, just give us a description of what he's going to buy? Yeah. People are going to ask, what are you yeah. buying for 40000 You know what police is yeah. buying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's, ask, let's ask him what, ask him for some more information. All right. And, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I, I'm not finding something. I don't think he came back with a detailed anything. No. He came in and presented basically what he was going to be looking for. Right. The I, car with, right. with a few of the things he was adding, yeah. but I don't think he uh, he didn't come right. back with some detailed paper right. that said yeah. and these are the costs. Right. I've, oh. And that was for a used vehicle, I think, when he was... I'm pretty sure I've seen John numbers. Around. Yeah, he, he... Well, I think he sort of... He knew what the cost was going to be, even... 
well, but not having a lot of detail. But let's get let's see if he let's can come up with some see more if detail. he can come. Yeah. Will it be too late by April 11th? No, that's right next to me. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with it, but I, but I think people should know what we're buying for the 40000 and what he's buying for the $40,000. And what I remember, it was, I don't know if he proposed a number or, or the Capital Improvement Committee chair proposed the number. And of course, he agreed for more money, I guess, but... And that was the end of the discussion, but... Uh, well, while we're talking about vehicles, and go back to the police cruiser, and I, which I have no problem with, but for <laughs> for your own sake, you need. I would suggest we clarify this third vehicle scenario that we got into a mess with last year yeah. or, or year before, or whatever yeah. it was. Um, I mean, again, I have no problem. I understand the third vehicle, but I just want to make sure you and the select board understands the third vehicle. Because I think the plan still is to have a third vehicle, for, a cruiser, for detail. Okay, but he's saying yeah, here this yeah. his new vehicle is replacing the 2013 vehicle. Right. So he's got a 2017 and they have a 2019. So what's going to be his third vehicle? The third. No, I, I, he's, I don't think he's got a 17. Yeah, we just bought him one here. Well, that's the new one. That's the newer our newest. One, right. I think he's replacing the current crew, the current sedan, sedan cruiser. That's the 2013. Right. By replace, he means. I think we're mixing terms. He means take it off. It's not going to be the frontline cruiser anymore. Right. It's going to be the third detail cruiser. Right. Okay. And, he's, and, and we will junk or however we want to do it. Scrap, sell the one that's out there now. The fourth one that he's right. going to have. Right. Okay. But he's still going to have this 2013 one as, as a detail. detail one. And we wanted more details on uh, the cost of keeping that third one. Uh, what you know, What is the town actually paying for for something that is basically allows people to make overtime? Right. And the answer and to that was insurance. That's the only thing the town has to pay for. Well, insurance. But no, if, if it breaks down. No, no, it it's out of the detail money that's paid for the car. That was the whole There's a fee that's paid. There's a fee that's paid. Right. So yeah, there is no expense to the town. That was the whole So deal. by having no. this car and paying the insurance, we're uh, providing, in some ways, a, a benefit to police officers in the sense that right. that they can uh, choose if they want to to make, earn money outside of their regular shifts by doing details. Uh, they can do details with or without a cruiser. Yeah. They my, currently do. Yeah. My, my opinion is that the, the work site is safer. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, no, oh, no, I, I when, there's, when there's a cruiser and there's right. light bars and stuff like that, it makes, right. it, it makes it more visible. No, I, I, I think I, I, there's a public to, safety yeah, benefit. So there's certainly a public safety benefit to having a, well. a cruiser. No, I just wanted to be, be, be really clear. If we're paying, I don't know how much insurance is on a 2013 no. police cruiser. I know what it is on my 2009 Prius, which isn't very much. But, yeah. uh, but uh, I, and, I, and I don't, in principle, object to uh, police officers being able to earn money outside of their shifts. We want it to be at least cost neutral is what we, you're saying. It, it'd be as close as we can be to cost neutral, and if we're doing this as a benefit to them, then let's recognize that we're doing, that, that this is a benefit that's part of, of uh, something yep. we, we do that doesn't cost us too much that maybe is a benefit for them. Yeah. But yeah. It, yeah, but it, so let's just do it with intention and not well, with, you know, with well, if, unintention. If, I the guess. Only, if the cost is, is for insurance, I guess you could just ask Lynn, uh, Lynn yeah. and Mary Ellen, what, what do we pay for insurance on that vehicle? Yeah, and, and so it's, a, mean, it's an easy number to come by. Yep. Uh, so If it's minimal, fun, if it's, I don't know, several thousand dollars, well, then I think we need to look, look at it again. Yeah. Yeah, but we can find that number. Yeah, we can yeah. find it. We can find, and we can find out if, if some of that can be covered by the money that comes in for do, for details. It, it might be that it won't entirely be covered, but it might be somewhat covered. And maybe we just have to ask for a little more for details to help cover that. Um, I, I'm not trying to mess up a good thing that people have for uh, you know getting by in an economy like ours. And 
especially since we, you know we don't we have a lot of part-time officers who aren't earning, who aren't getting benefits. Um, yep. So uh, so I don't particularly. I'm not trying to 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 say we shouldn't do it or shouldn't uh, facilitate that, but let's get it as close to cost neutral as we can, and those detail payments might be one way to do it. Well, uh, the way I understand it, the detail payments only go to the to the to the officer through through uh, uh, the land here through the town. Mm -hmm. The 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 vehicle charges whatever is goes to the police account for that vehicle. He maintains all of that. I don't think they even see that here. What the that charges do they? Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Well, that's what I was told a while ago that. That Jim maintains that account for that vehicle. Yeah, he has access to the He's account. Access, but but it's part of our accounting. Part of your, your accounting, well. Part of the town's accounting. Well, I was told we don't know what that is now. If we do, maybe that's something to look at. How much of a budget item is that? If it's several hundred, no big deal. But if it's $5,000, I mean, I, I don't know. Right. With the budget, it would only be insurance. Right. Well, yeah, it affects insurance. the yeah. town. Yeah, insurance. It's insurance. Yeah, that's the only budget yeah. item. Everything yes. else is covered through the detailed payment. Right. Well, so, so we'd like to see that account. Right. Yeah. Right. That's what. That's what we're we're, right. we're asking. So, 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 this, so this is pertinent to what we do with that car once it's replaced. Right. Not necessarily right. whether the exactly. merits of whether we think it exactly should I not agree. be a frontline car. I agree. Okay. Okay. Okay, that, are we done with the, the capital? We didn't go through, but I, I, I don't have any, I don't have any problems with the rest of the items here. They're, they're needed items, and yeah. um, they've been read out of, at previous meetings. All right. Okay. So I would recommend those with the, uh, with the change that we talked about. All right. Okay. Uh, moving on, miscellaneous funding requests. Let's, let's just talk about this for a second because some of these might be the first time people are hearing of them. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Unless they watched the finance committee meeting last night. But um, there's, so there's some miscellaneous funding requests. One, um, the first one is um, $20,000 for the 250th committee um, to start saving for the 250th anniversary celebration. The other one is um, a frontier capital item for the purchase of a of a uh, subcompact utility tractor um, that will maintain the fields. Um, the other one is seventy five hundred dollars for health insurance. This is a, a required payout under Master in Law Chapter thirty two B when when towns change health benefits. Subscribe they're required under this provision of law to share in 25% of the savings mm -hmm. um, and distribute that to the subscribers. Um, so with the health benefit changes that the town had made through Hampshire County Insurance Trust, it saved about $28,000, a little bit more than that, um, $28,000, dollars saved. savings, so costs not incurred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, need to, we need to actually pay out um, $7,500. It's painful right. for me um, to hear every subscriber. Time. But in theory, we'll each year that if we didn't make those changes, yeah. we're going to be saving. Mm -hmm. It's going to keep it's yeah. going to build up incrementally. And the last one is, is uh, $3,000 for an, um, pay out of benefits to an employee who's going to be resigning at the end of April, which we'll talk about in a couple minutes. Okay. And then the miss, and then the transfers that are recommended here is to close the ambulance stabilization account because we don't have a need, need to purchase separate. ambulances right. um, and transfer that to the vehicle stabilization. And then we have um, 140000 We have $166,086 in the Mill River Bank Stabilization, Bank Stabilization, River Bank Stabilization yeah. grant account, not a stabilization account. Right. River Bank account. Yeah. Stabilization of the um, bank. And, no, and those were reimbursements bank. for the FEMA grant that the town had received. And there were, I'm told that there were promises back in the day that money was taken out of stabilization to, yeah. um, to pay for some of that work and that yes. uh, proceeds Indeed. as much as possible would be returned. So 
I'm not completely comfortable wiping out that account. I haven't seen a a um, a final site visit from Army from the Army Corps of Engineers yet, mm -hmm. and there's still some additional monitoring for endangered species, monkey flowers and mussels yeah. and yeah. turtles that need to take place. Right now, that monitoring is covered um, through the Enterprise Fund, and I think we'll be okay. Um, but if there's any more significant work that needs to be done with the, the river channel or the banks, yeah. um, I think it's good to have a little bit of money in yeah. that account. Nope. Okay. So each, good with those. each of these miscellaneous requests will be Warren articles, separate yeah. Warren articles? That's the intent, yes. Each one? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So are we okay with the miscellaneous fund requests and the transfers? Yeah. Okay, the next one is uh, Community <laughs> Preservation Act request. Yeah. This was a sheet that was provided by the CPC. So you'll, one of the things to notice is that the projected revenue is, is lower this year because the state didn't match um, as yeah. much as it had in the past. One of the reasons is that some of the larger cities have passed, have now passed CPA. So yeah, the pot gets smaller. But still, um, wait, we still get a, a pretty good yeah, matching percentage. Okay. So this first, these first bullets are 6,000. So these are transfers to the, to this to the specific buckets. CPA yeah. buckets account. 6,000 to admin, 12,000 to open space, 12,000 to community housing bucket, 47,000 to budget and reserve. Um, they want to appropriate up to 43,000 $43, dollars for principal and interest payments on town hall borrowing. So that would that's going to the town previously authorized up to four hundred thousand dollars of borrowing. We should actually see those documents fairly soon for the select board signature. Um, How many years borrowing is that? Um, well, we've been authorized up to twenty. Right. What what is likely um, going to happen? So Lynn is proposing, and we've worked with the financial yeah. consultant on this. Is that there'll be there'll be three years of um, probably three years of bans, so bank anticipation notes. So it's just one year uh -huh. when you're borrowing the full amount, and then um, more permanent borrowing after that time. Um, we'll have the details for um, okay. uh, the next meeting, okay. and then the one lonely project that they have is um, thirty thousand dollars for cemeteries to continue the cemetery stone restoration in the cemeteries. Um, and then the CPC is looking to make a payment. So in addition to the that first payment, they're looking to make a, a payment up front of $50,000 against the borrowing. Yeah. Um, that's, what, that's what that next line item is. So the borrowing would probably only be three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, moving forward. Okay. And I need to clarify whether this is it, whether this is going to happen or not. But um, the transfer of um, twenty one thousand from the housing bucket to the housing trust. Were you at that? Were you at that meeting with yes. the housing oh, trust? Oh, sorry. Yes. I was. Was that going to happen? Do you know if that was going to happen, or was that going to be? The housing trust did not vote to do that. Okay. And but I understand CPC did so because I think there is we can it, we could use the the money for other things that would it be in the housing bucket. Right. That stayed in the housing bucket versus putting it into the housing trust. And yeah, you can get it out of the trust, but then you'd have to have. Yeah. A, uh, special meeting to do that. Yeah. Right. So that's why. They so if we don't have an, if we don't have an agreement or have a likely to have an agreement, then it doesn't make sense to do that. No, and that can happen anytime. I mean, you can do the next. If we have a special meeting, they could transfer it. If, yeah. if 
yeah. CPC wanted to. So, the, so there may or may not be a warrant article that you signed on April 11th. Okay. That so that was. So if the to. if the housing trust gets their poop in a group and makes a decision on this, and if I recall right, and I might be I might have the details wrong, part of the decision was whether or not they're willing to do this. Oh, let's have an agreement every time. Yeah. Um, that they, they might. I think they're okay for that. They're okay for that. Oh, I okay. think they're okay with the agreement every time. I think it's more of are there some things that could be done by the town that qualify okay. uh, activities that could qualify to use some of this money in the housing bucket, right? Right. right. Yeah. So. so the 21000 would just go into the bucket, not to the trust. Correct. Housing if, bucket, yes. It would stay yeah. in the housing bucket. Stay if this housing. doesn't happen, it would, it would. Right. Yeah. Right. And if this were to happen, there would be an agreement that says what exactly the housing trust is planning to do with the money. It would be, yeah, like, like the grant agreements that we have right. signed in the past. So, yeah, I, I, it sounds like it's not happening. I mean, just, if, if we don't know now what they're planning to do with the money and yeah. they're not, like, you know, trying to get this done, that doesn't sound like that's going to be a town meeting. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Well, the, I, I don't have any problem with any of the others. Yeah, I don't either. The other yeah, ones look fine, too. Yeah. So I'd be okay with recommending uh, those. And then pending, if, we, if at our next meeting somehow this pulls itself together, I'd certainly be willing to consider it. Okay. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Other warrant articles? Other warrant articles. There's a sheet in your packet, um, yeah. 2018 annual town meeting. We can just run through these quick, um, just to get these on your radar. These, I think most of these will make the, um, some of these I have a little bit more details than others. Um, some of them I need to follow up on, but. Um, so the select board voted over the past couple meetings and the point board recommended that, that the, the town accept the, Pine Plain, the streets in the Pine Plains estate. So the next step is for um, town meeting to accept the layout that the select board has done. Okay. And to also authorize the town to acquire um, either an easement or fee interest in the real property. So the laying out of the street is setting the bounds. So, uh -huh. so the town votes to set the bounds of the street, but you still need to acquire the right to the right for public passage on that. Okay. Um, so there's gonna be two more articles, a little bit same topic, a little bit different. Okay. Um, both need to pass for. Right. For and, and neither will require us to pay money. Is no, the, it, yeah. it the, says fee interest, but that's not. Right, fee interest mean meaning pay. full full interest. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Own is so it means complete ownership. Right. Yep. Yeah. But who would pay for transferring all that to the town? Would would the Iron Plains Estates or does the town have to take the action and register with deeds and all that? Um, Has that been discussed? It hasn't been discussed. Okay. We can So discuss there is some legal yeah. fees involved to do that. Right. Uh, we'll pay, I mean, at the very least we'll have a recording fee. Right. Um, which is $75. Right. And the uh, thing we're waiting on town council reply as to whether this should be an easement or a full interest. Correct. And I did hear back, and it doesn't really matter. Oh my gosh. Um, the, the, the person who's donating it would, would prefer to, to, to donate the fee interest, the full interest. Um, oh, okay. The only difference, the only complication that would happen, well, there, there's, there's, there's two complications that could happen. One is if, if we do the full interest, as opposed to the easement, if the road's ever discontinued, uh -huh. which is highly unlikely yeah, because yeah. there's there's a bunch 30 of houses homes on there, on there, there. The, town would, the town would have to, if it wanted to deed, it would have to deed back the land um, uh -huh. if it wanted to. But the easement, the easement would just go away and whoever owns the underlying, uh -huh. underlying land continues to own right. it. And the other one is if there's any concerns, and I think this would be more in the city, of, of environmental contamination. Um, okay. So 
I don't, I don't think there's much of a difference in, in this specific situation. The okay. next, the next one would be, we need a warrant article to allow the, the fire chief to continue beyond the age of 65. So this is everybody's chance. Is there an upper limit of what he can serve? I believe it's 70. 70? Uh, yeah. So, do we know how many more years then till he's 70? Well, five years maybe. Yeah. Six. Well, yeah. I thought so we had, didn't we have one of these on before? Or was it somebody else? Somebody else. Uh, it was his brother. Brother. Peter's yeah. brother. We had one or two before. Come yeah. on, guy. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what I remember, because I knew yeah. there was somebody else. Yeah. So that requires uh, act of special legislation, so we have to vote that and it's requested. Right. And okay. Um, local marijuana sales tax vote. So I, I need to thank my colleague, it is 3%. I was that's looking at an outdated uh -huh. treasury website. I was pretty sure it was 3%. Mm -hmm. I was pretty sure 3% until I convinced myself it wasn't yeah. yesterday afternoon. Um, yeah, I think if it had gone down, we would have heard something yeah. about it. So something. it was two percent in the voter initiative, and it was changed to three percent when the legis uh, when the legislature yeah. rewrote the, the the law. Okay. So was there an amount yeah. that you think appropriate? I'm, I'm with I'm with the the finance committee on this. Uh, I'm not, I, I don't want to do anything to impede them, but tax it to the greatest extent we can. There are so few things that we are allowed to tax at a local level. We tax everybody's property probably more than we, we should. So if we had more business, we would be able to have that kind of income, but we don't. So we should, if that kind of business comes to town, we should tax it. Was this discussed at finance? Yes. Yeah. I was okay. You, I think you might have left at that point. Okay, and they agreed on the three percent. They agreed okay. to the highest. Yeah, so whatever the highest possible. is. Because yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. I mix up my numbers. Okay. Yeah. And then the marijuana use on public property was a a policy or a bylaw. So I talked to with Fran Fortino this afternoon, and what most towns are are, are simply amending their um, tobacco prohibitions on public property, smoking, uh -huh. um, to include, um, well, I should say not necessarily tobacco smoking, but any type of tobacco use on public property. They're amending those laws to include marijuana uh -huh. in the same sense. Um, so I talked with um, Fran today, and he's going to look into it. Um, uh -huh. Whether we can, whether it's just going to be done, whether we should just do it through a board of health regulation instead of a general town bylaw. Oh, okay. All right. So that that's to be determined, but it's just want to put that on the radar. It's so it's a possible. Yep. Because right now they would they would right now on the books there was nothing that would prevent people um, yeah. from smoking marijuana or ingesting marijuana on public property. Okay. Um, All right. You've got till April twenty something. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So there's the plan of board. Yeah. Yep. The plan of board is going to be is going to be recommending um, slight changes to the um, to the zone and bylaw to better um, better regulate farm breweries. This this, this yeah. came out of the, the Hitchcock yeah. Brewing. Um, permitting discussions yep. that, that, that took place um, and they just wanted they just want to make the they want to make the zoning bio a little bit more specific um, yeah. about these kind of uses because they're they're right on the line of it, it's these quasi agricultural right. uses that give give us a lot of problems yeah um, yep. are they agriculture they're not agriculture if they are they have a lot more a lot more freedom mm -hmm. to that's right from the zoning bylaws if they're commercial then so there, there's trying there's some clarity that you're trying to achieve there yeah so what's in place now would be grandfathered in correct okay yep so uh, are they going to be coming back to us they did come to us once to present something about what the kind of what the parameters were within which they have to make any marijuana uh, zoning laws. Um, 
they have, as far as I know, have not presented their own recommendations and there was even going to be a public meeting maybe uh, to present what they're proposing and things right. like that. They're, they're racing against the clock right now. Um, yeah, they didn't have a lot of time. We, yeah. well, we got a phone call and a, a couple emails just before I came in here. Um, I'm not even sure that the public hearing is set yet. I think oh. there was conversations about April 18th or, or 17th, so uh -huh. there is talk about and I don't know if that date is yeah. set in stone, but right. there is talk of, of of having moratorium language as a backstop if okay. either it doesn't get either the, the bylaws don't get adopted or they it just doesn't come together in time. Right. Um, so this is it's a fluid situation. We will need language in time for when the warrant is signed, April eleventh. Yeah. Or else, we can't. Right. We can't vote on something. We can't vote on meeting. something that that's not in the warrant. Well, what's the last day for the warrant to be signed? The last. Um, well, no, the absolute last day. I think. I gave us seven it, it's, days. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I tried to give us the eleventh, so it's the twenty fourth. Well, that says we're going to select board meeting, but yeah. But you have the next one is the 24th annual, so if you go seven days, well, that's the 17th, that's the I guess. the 17th, yeah. So? So if we don't get anything by the 11th, we may have to meet on the 17th? Well, I would even recommend we meet a day earlier, because it needs to be posted. On the 16th, then? It needs to be posted um, seven days. So if we meet on the 17th, we'd have to get the constables here right after the meeting, it would be better off to it on the 16th. So we if we need to. And but that would be the absolute last day that we could do something. Put that as a placeholder for now? Yeah, I'm gonna put that on my calendar right now. And if that, if that were the case, I would recommend that we don't meet the 11th, probably. I know you guys okay. love meetings. Yeah, if it's on that day, I do teach till six o'clock on Mondays. So I can't get here at six. Seven. Yeah, six thirty. Six six thirty was is a little hard too, but uh, six forty-five or seven. Yeah. Um, what What would we? It wouldn't have to be a long meeting though. We'd be waiting for just the, the zoning, the two items that zoning has. It seems like that's the that's most. That's the only thing that's. There's nothing to be delayed. It's a little worrying to not, I mean, I don't like their timeline. I mean, it's not their fault, right? No. But uh, no. being able to explain, you know, what the changes are is, uh, is important. And it's not, uh, I, well, it, it's not always easy to explain those changes if you're not familiar with kind of planning board jargon. Um, so. Okay, but but if we if we don't agree with that, I mean, how much time do we have to ask them to change anything? I mean, we're, if we're just reviewing it, you're you're stuck on the sixteenth with what they present because you don't have time to go back and ask them, or they don't have time to go back and change yeah. and propose well, it as a different. We we don't get to decide. Remember, we just have we you say recommend or not. Right. Well, so do can we, we sign a warrant that doesn't do say? Public uh, excuse me. Um, do we sign a warrant that says? without a recommendation, but we can make a recommendation after the warrant is signed. I mean, it's, does the recommendation have to be on there uh, on the on the day of? Like, we could sign it and say, yeah, we want this to go to town meeting. We don't know whether to recommend it or not, but we could certainly sometime between get ourselves up to speed, even perhaps at a public meeting on the 17th or 18th, perhaps, to uh, to and be able to make a recommendation at town meeting. I don't know. It's It's unusual. But it's a tight timeline, so. I think we could put a language that says recommendation to be given at, at town meeting. Town meeting, because um, the warrant, the warrant doesn't need to list. Does legally have to list who recommends it, who doesn't recommend right. it? So. Well, but should we be? I guess I'd like to see something before before that meeting. If if we're 
and then have it on the 16th to yeah uh, that, I think that would be ideal have it either yeah. have our meeting like we have on on the 11th or when is the next planning board meeting do you know are they meeting they must be having more frequent meetings they are um, I want to say there's one scheduled for tomorrow yeah Ooh. Look on their calendar, somewhere on their yeah, uh, next month's calendar. <laughs> yeah, I will pull it up. Well, what are we asking to present something on the 11th and see what we get at our meeting? And then we can decide. And, and with the understanding that it may be incomplete. And then we can decide if, if we agree and it's good enough for one article or we want revisions and we can come back on the 16th, I guess, with another version if we need to. So. It would be the, it would be what the, we can we can provide them recommendations, as to what the bylaw would say. They don't have to take our recommendations. No. Um, but we won't see that until either the sixteenth or the eleventh. I'm hoping we. I'm hoping we will. I'm hoping we'll see it before then. Yeah. No matter what, the public hearing is going to occur after the warrant has been signed. So any changes right. that may come out of the public hearing are going to have to be done on the floor. Yeah. A town meeting. So the, so they'd have to have a public hearing that that week, I guess. They, I well, think, tentatively they have a public hearing the eighteenth yeah. or nineteenth. I think it's the. I want to say it's the eighteenth. Uh, planning board is tomorrow at five. Yeah. Um, What's next month? They had they had some public meeting on. The I'm looking at it takes us to go up to next month. They had the draft pre roll wrapped up last night. Yeah, I think for that's the, what Judy's call was. That by nine thirty, she had it finished, and then the question of the moratoriums came up for her. Yeah. Well, okay. See what see what what they can come up with. I guess for our meeting on the eleventh. Yeah, right. That that that'll be the plan moving good, forward. Yeah, the plan, right? We're it's signing not, it on the eleventh. Yeah, yeah. Unless there's a good reason why. Yeah. Why we shouldn't, right? Right. Yeah. But you're saying they, that you're saying like if they could have been here tonight, they might actually have had something. They've made their decision on that, and they're working on this backstop language or yeah, something. I just got a message from her, but the right message the was meeting. by 9.30 last night, she'd gotten it pretty well done. Oh, okay. okay. And then some question came up for her. Okay. That's why I asked her about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there is a planning board on the 6th, it looks like. Um, on the 6th, that's a yeah. Friday, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. It didn't switch to April. Dang it. Sorry. Mom's getting used to the internet here. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, moving on. Next item, Brian, is the uh, revolving fund language tree account. Yeah. I, I need to follow up. I actually have an email request in the keep to see what this is actually about, but I, I have a placeholder, so we will see something along those lines to amend the language for the revolving fund to the tree account. I can't recall exactly what the purpose was, but we will have that in place for okay. the 11th. Okay. Um, this was from Lynn. There was a, a change to the uh, Mass General Law currently. Um, oh. the, uh, the tax collector can only, tax collector or town clerk, I, I can't recall which one at this point, um, can withhold permits for non-payment of taxes. I believe it's tax collector. It's a tax collector. Um, yeah, that's what it says here. That's what I wrote, but um, yeah. sometimes who knows. Um, they can withhold permits for non-payment of tax, taxes. Um, for past years, if it's not payment. Uh, oh, okay. So now there's a change to the law that says um, tax, tax collectors can withhold permits for non payment of the current tax year. Okay. So we just need, it's going to be an acceptance of 
reacceptance of mass general law, uh -huh. whatever it is. Um, but that's that's the substance of the change. What, what kind of permits are they? Yeah, building permits. Building permits. Sure. Building? You, you have yep. to have so a signed. Yep. Sign, um, uh, you have to have a signed document saying that you're current on your taxes before the building inspector can issue a okay. oh, permit. Yeah. So, so we should. So they'll, so she'll sign off on. We should oh, okay. clarif clarify that in here, I think. That's probably say. in the uh, in the electronic system, then, because I know there's several yeah, places to sign on. Well, I, I don't know, yeah, I know what other kind of permits, well. A building permits mostly, I would think, but. I think it would be, yeah. I think, I'll check the language of the statute, but I think it's nearly every type of permit. Tax Tag permit. sale permits, pay your taxes. Trench permit, taxes. whatever, driveway permit, whatever. Yeah, okay. He looks specifically, but yeah. Okay. It's it's definitely building. It's definitely building permits. Yeah, for sure. Okay. okay. And then I, I possibly there might be there might be an article in there for the leasing of office equipment. I'm trying to find out if that was changed from the Municipal Modernization Act. Okay. So, for instance, a couple of years ago, we had we had to, we have to have a warrant article. To approve a four-year lease of the copier, yeah, kind of archaic and yeah, not necessary. Um, but I still need to. So there may be something. Else. Okay. And then we're gonna have all the other typical ones that we normally see. Right. Um, Allowing us to borrow money from time to time. Yeah. So time to time series. Time to time. Revolving funds, those types of things. Okay. Now, Brian, you, you've got this other spreadsheet here on budget projections number three. Yep. Do you want to just a uh, summary of everything or what? Yep, that's just a, a broad overview of. <coughs> on the left side, on the left side is revenue, on the right side is expenses. Okay. Um, the amount of the tax levy. Um, makes up the difference between our expenses and non-property tax revenue. So in this case, we'll be looking at a tax levy of um, $4,159. Um, $159,000. Um, so if that's what, our, that's what the projected tax levy is, in order to calculate the tax rate, you take the you take your tax levy, you divide it by um, the assessed value, and you times it by a thousand, and it gives you the yep. um, the cost per thousand dollars of and valuation. So, if we look at historic ten-year average, the assessed value is increased about four point one five million dollars each year. Um, so when we do projections, we can, you can see below that, we can assume there's no growth, there's right. no growth in assessed values, we can, so you can add different numbers. Um, so if there's, if there's the average growth, it would mean a tax rate of about um, $15.46, that would be up about 12 cents. Um, if we only have $2.1 million in growth, it would be 15.58. If, we're, if we beat the average, so it's hypothetically either at 6.1 million, um, tax rate would stay about the same as it is currently. What have we been doing for the last two years? I don't know if we have that anywhere. I think it's been more than a, I think it's been more than a 4.1. There was a graph of that I yesterday. I thought it was tax rate graph or something. Oh, that's what you had off the No, no, I'm asking the, the assessed value increase to 4.1. It's been, let me see if I have it here. Nine, ten years ago, we were pretty flat probably, but the last couple of years, I think we've gone up. Yeah, it's been. I think with the new house, it's not. Yeah, and they're not all completed yet either, so, and we've got some more newer ones coming along. Well, Pine Plains Estates is still building, so. I don't know if I have that. Do you have that? Oh, that's not it. I don't oh, know if I have the price yeah. in here. It's, I have it in my office. That's fine, okay, if you don't have that, but okay. Yeah. Okay, so why don't you continue then? 
you've got here. Okay. Um, and then we always want to check the projected tax levy against the levy limit to make sure we're um, more okay with the good proposition two and a half. And we don't need the, that terrible O word right. um, override. And you'll see that the town is, is not really close to that at this point. Um, so the, the excess levy capacity for FY18 was $853,000. Um, that's projected to grow. Um, again, we're, we're taking some assumptions here. Mm -hmm. This is a really conservative new growth estimate of sixty-one thousand. Last year it was, it was more than that. It, it was Something more than that. that. It was a hundred, probably a hundred, hundred twenty thousand. Yeah. That's not about right. Yeah. yeah. In, in new growth, so even if you want to add forty thousand to that, or the excess levy capacity would be, you know, somewhere between nine hundred fifty thousand and. Nine hundred eighty thousand. Right. An additional. That is additional tax increase. Good news. Increase. I think it's been a while since we've had mm -hmm. a significant amount of money. Yeah. Uh, between us and the levy limit, I think our last override was two thousand six. But we had many. We had a real long string of years yeah. where we were like within thirty thousand ish of our levy limit. Yeah. So. so in terms of, there's not really there's there's not really any proposition two and a half concerns right. this year or you know probably for the foreseeable future. What I what I was telling the finance committee last night was, you want to make <clears throat> one of the things to be careful about is that you don't the trends. If you see your excess levy capacity shrinking here, yeah, it means you're your levy is going up more than what two and a half allows, right. uh, plus new growth. So that means you're shrinking your, you don't, you don't want to be shrinking your excess levy capacity. Right. You want to either see it stay the same or you want right. to see it grow. Which is something you don't see with the, 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 just the numbers of our budgets going up this percent or that mm -hmm. percent, um, but that takes into account the growth, <coughs> right. which is um, a good perspective to put on it. Yeah. One thing that I just want to point out the difference between the increase in the operating budget you see is a hundred. The increase in the operating budget is 158,000. Uh -huh. But that doesn't mean that the tax levy is going up that amount. Right. Because the tax levy is projected to only go up um, approximately 96. $96,000 and some change, $96,000. Yes. Um, and that's because there's other expenses and revenue that we get besides the tax levy. So that our, our state and county charges are lower, at least in the governor's proposal this year, by about roughly $30,000. And the increase in aid is about um, roughly $30,000. So there's about $60,000 combined. Uh -huh. um, 30000 we get more and 30000 we don't pay. So um, that's why there's about a $60,000 difference between these two numbers. So those, so, so just the caveat that, I've, that I feel like I need to give every year, these are projections right. based on the governor's proposal. Yeah. We still need to go through the House proposal, the Senate proposal, conference committee typically. So we won't we won't know that we won't know state aid and state charges until town July meeting, first. Town meeting is a distant yeah. memory. Yeah. So um, it's Just, always tough to project. Yes. Just add that to the number of rules that the state forces towns to follow but will not follow themselves. So so as of as of today, based on what we know this is our proposed tax rate here of the Fifteen forty-six. That is one projection. It's an estimate. There, it's an estimate. There estimate. are there are a lot of assumptions underlying that. Okay. I would not take that to the bank, but it it's a ballpark. Number. It's an estimate in time. Okay. With a and lot of incomplete information. Right. And Probably plus or minus point two. Right. And you said you will we know that by town meeting time? No. 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 We never do. Because because this projection relies on on the new certified assessed values 
right. which don't happen until October. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and state aid, which doesn't happen until July if we're lucky, right. when, yeah. they, when they finalize the budget. So two of these numbers in this equation here, um, well, all of these numbers, are, are, they're going to change. Yeah. Um, I'd be shocked if this doesn't change at all. Right. Okay. So we legally have an opportunity to, to change that in, uh, in October or November. But we have never done that in the past. Not since right. Not right. since I've been here. I've only been here one. In in the one months. year, two year history that you've been here. Yep. Yeah. yeah. The long. The long. <laughs> sometimes it gets off. Yeah. Um, Sorry about that. History that I've been here. So so the the numbers that that we hear in October number is what the administration here is going to use to figure out the tax rate and typically that's the end of that discussion of budget for that year but well these numbers are set these numbers are so town meeting votes um, sets the operating budget right right we vote on the operating budget And typically, so our expense, look at our expenses for a second. Operating budget is typically, the appropriations are everything we vote on at town meeting. Right. Um, other amounts to be raised, that's state, that's um, state determined. State and county charges are state determined. Abatement, exemptions, overlay, that's something that we vote on at town meeting. Okay. So we typically know our, our expenses we typically know what those are going to be July 1 once we have once town meetings done and, and and we know our state our state numbers okay um, and we also know we also know um, our estimated local receipts don't change um, don't typically change very much okay. um, we'll know state receipts at that point Revenue for a specific purpose, that's that's at town meeting because these are all capital items. Or revenue we need to raise for capital items, which is typically from free cash. And then revenue to reduce the tax rate. The only thing we don't know at this point is this, is what the certified assessed values are. Yeah. Um, so it's, so it's almost, it's almost, Everything that the guideline or the guided, I don't know how to say, the framework is in place right. after July 1st. The only missing, the only piece we're missing is the, the assessed value number. Yeah. And that, that determines what that tax rate would be. Um, now, to your point, we could have a town meeting prior to once we get those certified values. Yeah. And, this revenue to reduce the tax rate that we have here, we could increase or decrease that. Right. Um, we could, we could, before we set the tax rate, we could put more in articles on to raise additional money through taxation if we wanted to. Um, so, those are the things that that can be done before the tax rate is set. Right. right. Yeah. How close did we come in this fiscal year, current fiscal year compared to a year ago when you were proposing this? Is it, do you remember? For the projections? Right. Last year we last year we only looked at we didn't we didn't take a guess at um, at what the increase in assessed values would have been. Okay. That was the difference between this year and last year. Right. Okay, but, but our current rate is is 1534. But last year, this time of year, when you were going through the budget stuff, what was... It would have been purpose? higher. It would have been higher than... I think we were talking like a... F because, we, because we were just assuming... We were just looking at last year's yeah. assessed values. We didn't do a projection with, the, no, with okay. that 4.1 million... Okay. 
Yeah. But I think it was it was like 64 or 84, right? Comes to mind. 15 something. Okay. Well, it would have been a slight increase. Yeah. If if we're not if we're not projecting. Yeah. Okay. See, the danger here is we have less. The danger with any of these predictions is that you're either over or you're under. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you make the the air on the side of caution and. Right. Uh, I think the best thing we can look at is, is well. Maybe there's better things, but we looked at the historic tenure average to try to give us a sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that will be conservative because most of the growth we've had is from more recent. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not comfortable, of course, it's on yeah. TV, but I'm not comfortable you know, going to the bank with any tax rate projection. Right. Because, oh, yeah, I, don't, I, yeah, because I don't know what the assessed values are going to be yeah. come, come October okay. um, from the assessors. So. Okay. okay. So it could be, like I said, if you look here, if it's 6.1, if the assessed values are increased by 6.1 million, then it's going to be, mm -hmm. you know, 15, no, yeah, yeah, it's and gonna I, be I understand it's, it's, in some ways it's an artificial number, right? Yeah. Your total tax bill is not going to change. It's, yeah. the rate will be whatever it needs to be. Right. But the temporary, so. the temporary tax bill will come with this rate until the temporary tax bill will come with last year's rate. What comes with last year's? They don't use the projection? No. No. Okay. No. Okay. Anything else? Uh, well, there was one other thing I guess I'd like to come back to, even though I don't want to, but it was a big item of discussion yesterday. It was the town hall, and it's in the capital plan for asking for a hundred two thousand and yep. I guess we we all approve that so is that is our position as select board to approve I what is being asked for on town hall yep okay I just want to make sure because oh no, no, you will not hear it I think well don't get me started because okay. we want to be out by eight Okay, but I want to make sure we, we're aware of that and we decided that's what we're and proposing. The, and okay. the Finance Committee has recommended it, in fact. Right, so okay. There we go. Okay. Uh, moving on, new business, uh, hiring, highway department position, Brian? Yep, I just wanted to let you know that um, one of the highway department employees has submitted his resignation um, effective at the end of April, so we're going to be looking to fill. Mm -hmm. uh, a position there. I'm, I'm not sure whether it's going to be the um, a senior position or a or the operator labor position, but we're going to be looking to. Um, I'll, I'll talk with Keith a little bit more and, and figure out which one we think is best to to fill. But we'll we'll have to be doing some hiring there. Okay. Okay. Moving on, town administrator updates. Well, I alluded to this briefly. In your packet is the legal notice from the no, I was just excuse that. me from the no. water commissioners for a proposed water rate increase. Okay. So we'll just let everybody know that the Whitley Water Commissioners will hold a public hearing on April tenth. 2018 at 5 p.m. at the town offices for the purpose of amending the water rates and fees. And there is a notice on the town's website if you want to see um, what the what the proposed rate, fee, and schedule is. Okay. Um, Does it give the current rates on there or just proposed? Um, I, I, I don't I, see them on here. No, not I the I, I'd ask. I think I'd ask that there be a comparison. A listing of the current water rates along with the proposed yeah. water rates. And so, after the public hearing on this, it's up to the water the water commissioners will decide. Yep. Okay. So yep. this will, doesn't need to come to a town meeting vote or anything. No. Okay. No. But people, you interested, show up. Okay. And these. Okay. Okay, the other thing, we got more information here in the packet. Yeah, received an email from um, a resident who was concerned about the cuts to the PBTA. 
And so the, my basic understanding is that PBTA Route 46, which serves the Whitley Park and Ride, uh -huh. um, could be subject to, could quite possibly be subject to cuts. Um, I think there's some right. general funding issues with the, the current administration in terms of regional transportation. And there was a concern that a connection between the PBTA and FRTA mm -hmm. um, would be reduced or or cut. Um, I don't know to what extent the board wants to Didn't we have somebody who this, was, uh, who was um, didn't we have like a representative on the transportation? We have an FRTA representative. Yeah, we do. That was FRTA. I think that's Don... John Sluder. Don Sluder, I believe. Yeah. No, uh, no it, it's, uh, well, it's it was, I, I was on last, a year ago, and then we changed to uh, uh, Richard Tilburg. It's a, no. Is the maybe, FRTA yeah, right. representative. But we so so we pay to FRTA, but we don't pay anything to the PVTA. That's what this is saying. And um, I don't. Uh, yeah. So somewhere in this budget, there's a payment we make to to FRTA to be a member. It's on our. It's part of our state and county charges. State and county charges. Which is transportation okay. charge. Well, is there any way to find out what it would cost and? I mean, I don't think it's I don't think it's going into this year's budget necessarily. But but if if we do if we can we are on the cost, we can't do a cost benefit analysis, right? Right. And it may and be that you already know, but whether there's yeah yeah. I mean, I, I could try to find out um, if it makes sense. I could try to find out um, the current status of this, and if it's appropriate, we could write a letter to our elected representatives with our concerns about this, and council can see what it would what it would take to to join the PVTA. Mm. Although I'm not, it it it, it may not be a, a real feasible option, but it, you know, to, we, we should know, right? right. If it's going to cost, you know, $6,000 a year, I don't know if that's something that people would support. You know, and, and, and maybe 6000 is is optimistic. But you know me, I'm optimistic. Yeah. Well, I, I guess, uh, yeah, you can look into it. I, I don't know if it's an immediate need to do this, but... It, it just, I don't know, if it, it, since, I mean, we're kind of in the town meeting mode here, trying to get ready for that. I don't know that yeah. this would happen before town meeting. No. Right. It might no. happen after and... Do it later, later on when you get a chance. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next one. These are just a couple things that we've received in the mail. Okay. That you can peruse at your leisure and all your... Okay. Like copious free time? Oh, your free time, yeah. Okay. Okay. What was um, I assume it's just part of town administrator updates. Yeah. Um, blue school proposals are due April 3rd mm -hmm. um, for again, people who want to buy the school. Proposal goes to Frontier. People who have interest in the Waitley land would send it to Waitley. And we will see um, what we get. Which reminds me, I, I'm I, I was remiss not to include on, on this potential warrant, list of warrant articles is um, we'll have to have this discussion once we see what the what proposals are received by Frontier and what they want to do, but the town still retains its right of first refusal. So there could be a last minute rush of proposals for the blue school. There could be. So hypothetically, Frontier gets a proposal that they really like and the town's not so keen on it. Uh -huh. We have the right to exercise a right of first refusal and purchase the property for, right. let's say it's a dollar. Yeah. Um, we still have that right to do that, and that would take a, 
that would have to be um, a warrant article in the town meeting. Um, or if we, whatever action we wanted to take, if any, with, with our property, it could also yeah. be a, a warrant article. Have any proposals come in? We haven't had any proposals come in. Uh, we've had three site visits with three different individuals okay. um, who have who had some interest in that. Oh, okay. But, but at this point, we're we're kind of waiting to see what what comes April third. Right, and, and Brian and I are meeting with them on April fifth. The meeting scheduled to, with Frontier to yeah. talk about that. Yeah. So that was shortly after that we should know what we got and how we're going to proceed. Yeah. And then one of the things that I have for you is just the reimbursements for the. Um, the rate signs that's or just red? Um, I think both. There's three lines. I'm taking one of them. Okay. Um, those are for the, for the Williamsburg Road Bridge yeah. Project. It's the, when you sign this, we get money papers. Yeah. The reimbursement for Still moving forward with the 32B process for the insurance. Um, yeah. We tried to, to take the shortcut, but right. they didn't want to do it. So there's a now there's a we had the IAC meeting. Now we'll have the PEC meeting, Public Employees Committee, which happens to be the exact same people as the Insurance Advisory Committee. People. So you're gonna have those two meetings, one right after the other. <laughs> Except notices need to go out in between them. Oh, in between. So I, in theory, I could have stacked them, but that meeting will be April, I believe it's April 4th. Um, and hopefully we'll get into it. Because we need to send out final notices 60 days before the plan goes into effect. So we need to wrap it up before the end of April. Okay. Which we should be on track to do. Alrighty. Uh, you seem to be finished. So, so our next meeting is uh, April 11th, yep. as of right now. Okay. Okay. I'll move to adjourn. Although so we'll have to. Uh, we we may have to meet again. We may have to talk to the finance committee. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. About okay. those differences. Well, uh, it won't be a, our next regular meeting would be scheduled for, for the 11th. For the 11th. Right. Right. Well, I think Fred can take that one by himself to the select to the finance committee, right? Yeah, if we need to talk about that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Whatever you guys would like to do. Yeah. All right. I mean, it's, it seems like a small enough thing. I don't think the presence of three selectmen need, no. need to be there for that. So and then we don't have to have a joint posted meeting or anything like that. And they may not even want to meet either, so. Well. It could be Tell us they can meet with me or they can meet with you, there. but not both of us. So let's see who they can. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. Okay, meeting adjourned. Yes, we're done.